Hello everyone, welcome to Allen Digital Classes. So today we are going to learn about a concept and that is the structure of ear. So this subtopic it is comes under the chapter Neural Control and Coordination. So let us discuss about this structure of ear. So ear is a stochastic organ and this stochastic organ it is mainly meant for hearing as well as for balancing and this structure of the ear it mainly consists of the three parts and those three parts are the first one it is outer ear and second one it is middle ear and the third one it is the internal ear so there are three parts of ear what are those external ear middle ear as well as internal ear so let us discuss one by one in detail so the starting with the the first one that is external ear external ear it consists of two parts one it is external auditory meters and another one it is the outer ear pinna so this outer ear pinna is the characteristic feature of all mammals and what is the role this ear pinna it receives the sound signal from all the direction and it channelized to the the auditory the meters and this auditory meter it is a canal like and this canal it transmits the sound waves to the the next part and that part it is tympanic membrane so this tympanic membrane it is also termed as eardrum and this eardrum tympanic it receives the sound waves through this external auditory meters and this tympanic membrane what exactly it is it is a type of connective tissue it is composed of connective tissue covered with skin outer side so outside the skin it covers and the inner side the mucous membrane covers this tympanic and this is a just a, a connective tissue membrane and when it receives the sound vibration no so sound waves then it starts to vibrate so the tympanic membrane as soon as it receives the sound waves then the tympanic membrane it starts to vibrate and those vibrations are channelized to the the next part of the ear and that is the middle ear so external ear it just consists of an ear pinna external auditory meters and the tympanic membrane and the next part it is the the middle ear so the middle ear mainly contains an air filled cavity or air filled chamber within that air filled chamber we can observe three small tiny ossicles and those tiny ossicles are called as first one malus second one incus and the third one it is staves so the three tiny ossicles present within the middle ear are malus incus as well as the staves so these three uh, ossicles arranged in a chain like manner so if you observe the malus malus one end is attached to the tympanic membrane whereas the other part it is attached to the incus and then incus the other part is attached to the the staves and the staves is the very tiny ossicle present in our entire the body so in the entire human body the tiny ossicle is this the staves bone in our ear and this staves one end it is attached to the incus whereas the another end is attached to the oval window so oval window is a part of internal ear so oval window it is the part of the internal ear to that particular part the staves is attached and this malus if you observe the shape the malus it looks like a hammer so it is a, a hammer shape bone whereas incus is anvil shaped okay you people have to remember all these terms it is important for your need so incus is anvil shaped whereas the staves is stirrup okay these are the different shapes of the the tiny ossicles which are present in the the middle ear so what is the role of these tiny ossicles these tiny ossicles mainly receives the sound vibration from the tympanic membrane and channelize those uh, sound waves to the the next part and that part it is the the internal ear so here as i mentioned the staves part it is attached to the oval window and this oval window is a part of the the cochlea so what is this cochlea let us understand the the cochlea part and the, the other structures that is the that is comes under the internal ear 
So, internal ear it is the third region and this internal ear is the major region which is responsible for hearing as well as for balancing. Whereas, this external and the middle ear is just act like a the part which channelizes the sound vibration to the internal ear. So, this is the major uh, the part which is responsible for hearing as well as for balancing. So, it is a, a fluid field. So, middle ear it is an air field whereas, the internal ear is a fluid filled part and this fluid filled part it is termed as the labrian and labrian it is a fluid filled part of the ear and it consists of two parts. One it is bony labrian and another one it is the membranous labrian. So, this bony labrian it is a series of channels and it contains a fluid that is why here it is mentioned it as fluid filled region. So, bony labrian it is a region which contains a fluid and the fluid which is present in the bony labrian is perilymph. Whereas, membranous labrian it is also present below the bony labrian and it also contains the fluid known as endolymph. So, these are important points. Bony labrian and the membranous labrian are the parts of the inner ear and within this particular internal ear this bony and the membranous labrian arranged in the different structure and those structures are called as the the cochlea as well as vestibular apparatus. So, the structure what you can see on the screen. So, that is the part of bony as well as membranous labrian. So, what is the major function of the internal ear? Mainly it is involved in hearing as well as for balancing. So, the both hearing and balancing functions are mainly controlled by this internal ear. So, let us talk about the first function that is hearing part. So, for hearing the cochlea part of the internal ear it is responsible and this cochlea it is the major sensory structure for hearing and this cochlea it consists of both bony and the membranous labrian which is arranged in the coiled form and this particular the coiled the structure it resembles to the shell of the snail. Yes, mollusk, the snail shell if we observe in the same way, so this cochlea part it actually looks like. So, where the membranous and bony labrian arranged in a the coiled manner and it is present below the vestibular apparatus. Cochlea is involved in hearing purpose whereas vestibular apparatus that is mainly for correct that is for balancing purpose. And when we take the section of the cochlea. So, when we take the sectional view of the cochlea, within the cochlea we can observe the three canals. Yes, within the cochlea we can observe the, the three canals and those three canals are the, the first one it is scala vestibuli and it consists of a fluid known as the perilymph and the middle chamber or the middle canal it is known as scala media which consists of endolymph whereas the third part it is Scala tympani, which consists of perilymph. So, the outer and the inner one that is scala vestibule as well as the scala tympani both contains the perilymph whereas the scala media it consists of endolymph. So, these are the, the three canals which are present in the cochlea. So, the another way of representing these three canals it is like this. So, the three canals those are the scala vestibuli, the scala media as well as the, the scala tympani. So, here you can see so the entire the coil tube no. So, if we open and arrange like this particular structure you can see the three canals. So, this is the scala vestibuli and scala media and scala tympani. Scala vestibuli and scala media it is separated by a membrane and that membrane it is termed as resinous membrane. So, resinous membrane is a membrane which separates the scala vestibuli as well as the, the scala media. Similarly, the scala media and the scala tympani it is separated by a membrane and that membrane it is termed as the bacillar membrane. These two points are important one. Be resinous membrane it is present be between the scala vestibuli and scala media. 
whereas in between the scala media and scala tympani we can see the the basilar membrane so resinous membrane and the basilar membrane which is separates these three the canals the next one so as i mentioned you no know, the staves one end it is attached to the oval window so if we observe here so the scala vestibuli it ends in a oval shaped structure and this part it is called as the oval window and the other end that is the scala tympani part it is terminates and that terminated end it looks like a, a circle that's why it is known as the the round window so one it is the oval window another one it is round window so the staves it is attached to the the oval window so the vibration which is carried by the staves that is mainly channelized to the oval window and that those vibrations are next uh, carried to the the scala vestibuli okay the next part so the main credit of hearing it is mainly goes to a, a sensory structure which is present in the cochlea and that sensory structure it is known as organ of corti so organ of corti it is the main part in the cochlea that is responsible for hearing what actually it consists of so this organ of corti is located on the basilar membrane so on the basilar membrane we can observe this organ of corti which consists of sensory hair cells as well as the we can observe a, a presence of a membrane above the sensory hair cell and that membrane it is termed it as the the tectorial membrane so here is the enlarged view of that organ of corti's sensory hair cells and here we can see these are the columnar epithelial cells which are modified as a sensory and at their apical surface it bears the sensory hairs called as stereocilia and above the stereocilia there is an elastic membrane and that elastic membrane it is called as the tectorial membrane this is important one above the stereocilia we can observe the the tectorial membrane and this entire structure it is responsible for hearing and at the the basal part we can observe the arrangement of the uh, the nerve fibers and these nerve fibers carry the impulses towards the brain and those nerve fibers are termed as the afferent nerve fibers so at the basal part of the sensory hair cells so when the impulses are generated for the hearing purpose and those impulses are carried to the the auditory areas of the brain through these nerves known as the afferent nerve fibers so this is the entire structure of organ of corti which is responsible for hearing purpose so this is the detailed view of the the cochlea and the second structure which is present in the internal ear is the vestibular apparatus and this vestibular apparatus it is mainly present above the cochlea and it is responsible for balancing purpose and this vestibular apparatus it consists of the following structures like it consists of three semicircular canal and those semicircular canal arranged in a, a right angle to right angle manner so they are arranged in a perpendicular manner so superior posterior lateral or horizontal the canals and it consists of two sacs known as the one utricle and another one it is sacculus so three semicircular canal utriculus and the, the sacculus are the part of vestibular apparatus here you can see the enlarged view of vestibular apparatus here you can see the semicircular canal arranged in a perpendicular manner and they are arranged in a that is right angle to each other and uh, so they enlarged uh, the portion of the the semicircular canal it is known as the ampulla and this ampulla it contains a receptors known as the crista ampullaris crista ampullaris are the receptors mainly help in balancing and those receptors that is known as crista ampullaris present in the the wider portion of the semicircular canal known as ampulla and this crista ampullaris it is mainly help in dynamic balance means why whenever the body it is in the motion at that time our body balance it is mainly maintained by this crista ampullaris and the two sac like structures which are present in the internal uh, ear are the so one it is the utriculus another one is the sacculus 
in both of this utriculus and the, the sacculus, we can observe a receptor and these receptors are known as the macula. So, crista and as well as the macula, these are the two receptors of the vestibular apparatus helps in balancing. So, the crista ampullar is involved in dynamic balancing whereas this macula which is a projecting ridge like receptor that is involved in static balancing. So, when we nod our head like this and when we bend at that time our body balance it is mainly maintained by this macula. So, both crista and the macula involved in balancing whereas cochlea it is mainly involved in hearing purpose. So, this is about the, the entire the structure of the the internal ear. So, the entire structure of the ear. So, now few questions related to the structure of ear we will discuss now. The first question which of the following structure is not related to body balance? It is only with respect to the body balance. So, maculae and the, the crista as well as ampulla. So, maculae are the receptors present in utriculus and saculae, crista ampulla is present in ampulla. So, these three structures are involved in balancing whereas organ of corti is involved in for hearing purpose. So, this part it is not involved in balancing purpose. So, the answer it is organ of corti. Next question. The structure in the internal ear which resembles a snail shell. I mentioned those while explaining. So, that is so, there is a structure where the coiled structure it resembles to snail shell and that part is the, yes that is cochlea. So, cochlea is the part which is involved in the hearing purpose, okay. So, this is about the topic of the structure of ear. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.